Call meeting to order in accordance with 940 CMR 29.10 remote participation adopted by the Greater Lowell Technical School Committee April 17, 2014. Committeeman O'Hare and Committeeman Bahu will be participating at tonight's meeting remotely. May I ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of can we please have a roll call? Yeah. Mr. Bahu? Ready? Mr. Bahu? Mr. Bahu? Mr. Bahu? Mr. Bahu? Mr. Mr. Tatsius? Here. Mr. Mormon? Here. Mr. Ogier? Here. Mr. LeMay? Mr. Sheehan? Yeah. Mr. Giggy? Here. Uh, public appearance. Are there any members of the public who have signed up to speak at tonight's hearing? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to um, announce that we have a student representative. Thomas Speronis is a 12th grade student in our computer aided drafting and design department. Thomas is a member of the National Technical Honor Society and has taken several advanced placement honors courses. Thomas is an Eagle Scout whose project involved designing and creating patio and walkway at St. Rita's Parish in Lowell. Thomas resides in Draken, is involved in bowling, and enjoys studying history. Thomas plans to apply and attend a four-year college to study architecture. Can we have your report, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Our student clubs and organizations for the 2021-2022 school year began meeting this week. Advisors and students are excited to be safely meeting in person this year with a full schedule of events and experiences for our students. A complete listing of our program offerings and how students can get involved has been posted on the student activities page of the gltech.org website. This year, all of our field trips, dance tickets, and other event tickets will be paid on myschoolbucks.com. Parents and students are also able to access field trip information and download permission slips directly from the website. Our freshman and sophomore planning committees are planning their eighth annual field trip to Screamfest at Canopy Lake Park on Friday, October 15th, 2021. This event begins with a movie and snacks after school and a pizza dinner before buses depart at dark for the park. The National Technical Honor Society has convened their faculty council to review applications for membership. Eligible juniors and seniors who choose to apply will be notified in the coming weeks with the annual induction ceremony taking place early in November. Homecoming 2021 will take place the week of September 20th to the 24th with a week's worth of activities, spirit days, athletics, and fun. The week will end with our homecoming Friday finale featuring varsity football under the lights, varsity volleyball in the main gym, the crowning of our homecoming court and royalty, and our homecoming dance. This year, our dance will be held under the cafeteria courtyard tent to allow for greater social distancing. All of our homecoming details can be found on the student activities page of the geotech.org website. And from the athletic department, the boys and girls soccer teams opened up their fall campaigns with big league wins over rival Shashin Tech. The boys bested the Rams 3-2, while the girls cruised to a 4 to nothing win. Both teams will face off with crosstown rival Lowell Catholic this week before testing themselves in a non-league matchup against Burlington on September 20th. Both will host Burlington, with the girls kicking off at 4 p.m. and the boys at 5.30 p.m. Cross Country opened up with wins by both the boys and girls team over Lowell Catholic on September 8th. The Griffin Runners will head to Greater Lawrence this week and then participate in the Tewksbury Invitational on September 18th. The new Griffin field hockey team kicked off their inaugural season on September 9th at Malden Catholic. This new squad will look to continue to improve in upcoming matchups against Austin Prep, Revere, Marblehead, and Malden. Girls Volleyball dropped a tough match against Mystic Valley in their season opener on September 10th. The Lady Griffins hope to rebound in league matchups against NDA and Lil Catholic this week. The cheer team has begun their training for a competition season this fall and look to be rounding into form for a run at the league championship 
and football dropped a tough matchup to defending Super Bowl champion Ashland on September 10th. The Griffins will host Wilmington on September 17th before opening league play against Essex Tech on September 24th during homecoming week. This concludes the student activities report. Nice job, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. The future so much. in public speaking. Yes. You're welcome to stay for the meeting or you may leave if you'd like. I do have to go to a Boy Scout event, but I appreciate um, the offer to uh, have this position in the school council meetings. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Nice job. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Welcome to at this time, I'd like to know if we can have an approval for the minutes and a motion to approve same. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Gutierrez? Yes. Mr. Bowman? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Ogier? George? Mr. Ogier? Yes. Yeah, he said yes. Mr. LeMay? No. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. At this time, can I have a motion to waive reading from the treasurer? Second. 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 Roll call? Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Can I have a motion to approve the expenditures of three million three hundred seventy-three thousand seven hundred sixty-four dollars and ninety-one cents? Motion. In a second. Mr. Can I have a roll call? Yes. Mr. Bahu. Yes. Mr. Tatius. Yes. Mr. Morin. Yes. Mr. O'Hare. Yes. Mr. Lemay. Mr. Sheehan. Yes. Mr. Gigi. Yes. I don't believe we have any report from general counsel tonight. Is that true? Well, I thank you. And then we're on to the superintendent's report, and I'd like to turn it over to our superintendent, Jill Thank Davis. you, Mr. Chairman. So this evening, uh, I'm happy to uh, announce that we have three new members of our leadership he team here with us. And I'd like to ask uh, Assistant Superintendent Principal, Mr. Barton, to, to join us to, to formally introduce these members to our committee. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the new members of the um, leadership team from Great Old Tech. Um, first, Valerie Bronco. Uh, Valerie is our new interim technology CTE chairperson. Valerie received her undergraduate education in nursing from Fitchburg State University as well as a master's in occupational education. Val went on to acquire another master's degree from Framingham State University in nursing. As well, uh, she was a graduate of Gridle Tech, or is a graduate of Gridle Tech, where she um, began her nursing career from her cooperative education placement at Palm Manor, and she went on to work at Palm Manor for 18 years. So Val is also taught in our day and LPN programs, and she brings with us a wealth of all aspects of nursing and uh, all aspects of this technology chairperson position. So, congratulations, Welcome. 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 Thank you. All congratulations. Board. Welcome aboard. Congratulations. Uh, next is Greg Haas. Greg has joined us as our new Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. Greg received an undergraduate education from State University New York, Albany, where he majored in History, English, and Psychology. He went on to receive a Master's degree from the University of Massachusetts Lowell in Education. He's also recently received a Certificate in Systems Thinking from MIT. Greg previously worked at Greater Lawrence Technical High School as a history instructor and an assistant principal. Greg brings with him a wealth of experience in lit literacy, data analysis, and both technical and academic curriculum and instruction. So welcome, Greg. Congratulations. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Lastly, but certainly not least, is Ms. <laughs> Jen Santiago. Jen has joined us as an assistant principal. Jen received her undergraduate education from Salem State University in social work and went on to receive a master's in social work from Salem State as well. Jen worked for the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families, first as a case manager and then as an investigator. Jen transitioned into education at Haverhill High School first as an adjustment counselor and then joined us last year here at Greater Lowell as an adjustment counselor. Uh, Jen is also a graduate of Greater Lawrence Technical High School and she brings with her a wealth of experience in counseling and many years of experience with families and children. So congratulations, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, they're well educated, huh? 
So the next item on my agenda is uh, just an update on the general health and safety protocols that as requested at our last meeting. Uh, you, you asked for a report. So just an update, uh, our last meeting was on August 19th where we voted to, uh, to implement a mask mandate here at Greater Lowell for all students, staff, and visitors. Just to update on August 25th, 2021, uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education also issued a mandate for all K through 12 schools requiring all students, staff, and visitors, regardless of vaccination status, to wear masks inside a school building. Uh, so that that was new. Uh, basically, they are going to revisit this mandate somewhere in the beginning of October. Uh, they have said that if a school has a vaccination rate of 80% or more, that uh, they could relax the mask mandate for vaccinated uh, individuals. So that's the up update I have currently in regards to masks and the mask mandate. Any questions? Sounds good. Uh, the next item on, on my agenda is, as you are aware, it's been in the news uh, quite frequently, there is a shortage of bus drivers uh, across the state of Massachusetts. So in order to be proactive, we have been meeting with NRT and we I'm coming before you tonight to ask for, to approve an incentive of $1,000 per driver for up to six drivers in order to have drivers to be back up and do alternate routes if necessary, uh, in order to avoid students from being rerouted, uh, being just being asked to move around a lot in regards to their to, to their bus stops, uh, and being able to have drivers available to do additional runs if a driver should call out. When we discussed this, NRT said that it could be on average that they could have up to six drivers call call in sick per day and that's why that number of an incentive for six drivers to be able to do alternate routes I'm asking for uh, an approval that would be a total of six thousand dollars for the school year it would be a thousand dollar stipend per driver for six drivers in order to be back up to 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 do alternative routes and, and, and will these drivers be committed Stay for the year. What happens if we give them so? A so what they are, they what they are, what they are, are drivers that are currently, currently working for NRT. So some of these bus drivers might be asked to come in and do a route earlier and drop off kids here, maybe at seven, and then go out and do another run and come back and bring back students. So they're looking to ask drivers that are currently employed for them to do this. So have we have three right now. What is NRT doing as an uh, incentive to the, his employees? So like I think it seems like we're get, we're doing all this money. Like we contracted his services. Like what is he? Doing so I think NRT incentive? is trying. It's it's a problem across the state. Uh, NRT isn't the only bus company that's experiencing this issue. There seems to be a shortage. We're just trying to solve a problem rather than saying okay from NRT they don't have any bus drivers to supply to us if we provide the incentive that could be something that could entice the bus drivers to do an additional run i mean i i, I understand the point but it should be on him i don't think it should come out of our budget it shouldn't okay. come from us i mean that's that's just my own general opinion um and if these people don't want to work shame on them i mean this, this i just so it, it's there isn't plenty of bus drivers out there no, right I now. I fully understand that. Right? If you saw the other day, they're calling in the National yes, Guard yeah, to I fully assist. Saw that, yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's disgusting that we uh, we got to this point. And again, it's my own uh, personal opinion um, that people just don't want to work. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I don't. I think the money should be coming from him and not us. So what I'm hearing from yeah. So what I'm hearing from you, Matt, is that. You think there is a contract, they have an obligation in which to honor their contractual obligation and it shouldn't be pushed down to the school or they, to make that decision. Right. And they made some business decisions prior to uh, when they laid people off and so forth and didn't keep them employed like the rest or some of the employers did during the COVID. So your position is that you think it should go back to NTA? 
I firmly think it should go to a NRT. NRT. Um, so NRT is telling us they have no bus drivers. So I'm trying to come up with a solution to be able to ensure that our kids get to school and not be rerouted at 5 o'clock in the morning to different stops. Not to be argumentative, but it wouldn't, he, wouldn't NRT be in breach of contract? Like if they don't, what's a... If he doesn't have bus drivers, isn't, isn't NRT in a breach of contract if they can't fulfill their contractual obligations? I'd, I'd have to take a look at their contract. Just but, a curiosity yeah. question, that's all. No, yeah, right. curiosity. Generally, you've signed a services contract right. with, uh, with NRT, mm -hmm. and I would imagine without having the text in front of me that their obligation is to provide drivers. Um, again, I'm going back to <coughs> during last year when they were having the problem about buses. I know that was one of the things that NRT had said was to try to make sure you paid them even though they weren't delivering services in order to retain... Uh, their, the bus drivers that they had. So, so to that point, we paid them. Right. So again, it's like the whole food service. Them, we paid their contract. So yeah. can we argue that point at, at a later time with them, Mike? I, if we I, decide I, to provide an incentive at this time. So just listening to the conversation, mm -hmm. I, I do think it is worthy of looking at what your employment contract is because what was jumping up in my head was the was what you agreed to last year in order to have enough people to drive those buses this year or whenever school went back. And they don't and, have them. Yeah. And I know it's not just NRT. I, you yeah. know, I, I will agree with Jill on that. It's, and you've said it, there are labor shortages in so many areas. Right. But you are 100% right that generally in a service contract, it's their obligation to find people. So, um, so I think that there could be a deal that needs to be worked out with them if there are incentives. And maybe it's a cost sharing uh, thing. But um, I, I can hear the Could concerns. the defense to the contract be that there's an emergent problem here and they can't meet it no matter what they do based on the labor shortage? So there could be a potential defense. Um, I think what Jill's maybe suggesting is that we try to keep the peace and you know try to work together as a team to kind of keep the kids on the, the best schedule possible, um, keeping in mind that maybe we can present this down the road as being a team effort and um, trying to keep all our suppliers and vendors in line um, for the future and so that we can work a more favorable resolution in the next contract period. I think maybe that's what Jill's kind of suggesting here is to kind of maybe aid in finding the, the help and the ability to do so. Or just and making sure that kids get to school. Sure, no, and I understand the concern from a school perspective and, and I'm happy to talk maybe outside of the bounds of an open meeting about perhaps, you know, some strategic things on how you could handle that uh, with your bus company. Again, you're not the only people that are facing this issue. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, and, and, and to uh, the chair's point, you know, there might be a force majeure clause that they might be able to argue given the, the global pandemic that we're still in, that that would excuse them. But again, you're talking legal arguments now. Right. What you want is solutions right now, not yeah. worrying about litigation. We like solutions, not solutions problems. Are exactly, yeah. that's what I'm... No, I, I understand that. Lee, did you want to add something? Yeah, I just, I, I just have a problem with it. He he bid the contract for six months. We paid him seventy eight percent. We voted on that. The buses sat idle. We did that in good faith. Now, his overhead's under fifty percent. We paid probably, you know, higher than we should have, but we did that in good faith to keep the buses there. Now, the six thousand dollars is coming from us, not him. He also re received federal money. He should be offering his bus drivers the incentive, not us, him. This $6,000 could go to our kids. I, it's a slippery slope with a contract with me. If, say we do the football field with sprinkler heads, and the sprinklers come in and there's seven, they, they break seven of them. They don't come back to the school and charge us for the seven. They eat that on the, on, the, on the bit. I just have a problem with this because, look at how many buses, can we take the freshmen from the first period and move them to the 12th? Would that, would that help? This and I, I agree with you thinking outside the box. I understand there's a labor shortage, but he was on the news last night. John McCarthy from NRTA. There's 90, 90. His quote: "I have 90 bus drivers in training for CDL. Well, why don't you do me a favor when the 90 come out, give us six. Well, that's good, but until the 90 come out, it, it's yeah. a daily problem, and we're we're really been limited. I, I get and, that. And really haven't. I get that, but we're limited when, when a teacher calls in sick, we have to take the substitute and go find one. If we don't find one, you've been in the classroom. These Everybody out here has been in the classroom. That's We find the solutions. This is You bid the job. 
I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I have a problem with young six men. But until they find a solution is what I'm trying to say. The kids are impacted, right? I, I so understand I'm trying that. to get a solution to make sure that our students are coming here every day and not having to be rerouted to a different... To a I, different I understand that, but that money should be coming from... Morning. That money should be coming from Anati, not us. Yeah. He, yeah. Look, at he, we gave him 70, 78%. The bus is sat idle. His overhead's under 50, so he made money. He put that money in his pocket. He got federal money. He put that money in his pocket. When is enough of enough? I'm just not in the business of giving away the money. It's just my, he, you bid the contract. That's it, it's, I understand. It's understandable. I guess I thought maybe we could get the kids here and then argue who's... He, he, who's he, he argue once labor. we give them the $6,000, it's all. If the $6,000 will get the kids... Well, we don't here. even know if they need to use it yet. Mm -hmm. Why does it have It's to just being money? proactive in case we have... Yeah. Uh, Jill, is there any issue if we delay the decision on this motion? Will we be adversely impacted to we allow could. us to meet with Mike McCarroll and see if there's any way that we can work a different resolution? I'm sure we could find a different resolution, but I can't guarantee that students aren't going to be impacted. I can't. All right, and what is the impact right now? If we don't have the drivers, the kids can't get to school. Is that correct? Well, no. It, right now, they're coming to school late. There's, I mean, this week we had one bus late every day. So every morning, those kids had to be contacted to say, you, you, your bus is going to be 20 minutes late. You need to go to the bus stop 20 minutes later. And I think we're only in that predicament because because we we are agreeing to have students get dropped off here at seven o'clock so that bus drivers can go out and do an additional run so have right? we, i know when i went here there was a first shift and a second shift there was an early and a late have we looked into that until the labor shortage is resolved meaning i don't know maybe maybe take the freshmen the 600 freshmen the first period we make them on the 12th period instead of picking them up the first period we make them 12. well i don't think there's buses to drop off at the end of the day either that's 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 an impact as well. There's impact with transportation at the end of the day. The bus drivers aren't here to pick up kids. There's buses that aren't going home till later. So, so there is an impact. And I, and, I, and I guess my question is, you know, I mean, is, is, is this going to be enough? Why is, you know, the, the head of NRT, Mr. McCarthy, not offering this incentive on his own? to satisfy the contractual obligations that he has. I mean, he's been um, operating here at Great Mobile Tech for many years, um, I think at least nine, and um, he's had some very lucrative contracts. Uh, I know we renewed uh, a contract just about a year ago, as well as about four years ago. And there always seems to be an, uh, uh, an added cost um, during every one of those contracts. And if, um, he is getting extra money from up to not running buses last year um, and not being proactive and having enough drivers for this upcoming year. Um, and I understand there's a driver shortage, as there's every shortage out there. I don't know that every business that's out there is giving away a thousand or two thousand dollars to hire new people is actually hiring new people. I believe that it's more on the person that signs the contract to be proactive to sign um, enough bus drivers to satisfy his contract. I'm, I'm not disputing that, Mr. Barber. I'm not. And I could, I can go back and sit at the table and we can discuss this further. But I, I guess what I'm trying to <coughs> avoid is a daily problem. I guess so what until we what resolve the issue, I, I can't guarantee t to anyone that we won't have bus issues. So, for example, today when we had the delay, one student or the, the, the kids didn't get here on time today, if we had this payment in place, would that be prevented? Yes, we would hope that it would be. That's the whole discussion about this payment, is to have backup drivers available to, if, if they can get someone to agree to take this incentive to do an additional run. I think 
that's that's the issue as well. This is just another idea to bring to the table to to try to get some bus drivers to make the commitment to do an additional run if needed or do a different run. Apparently they bid for their runs and their runs are bid so certain bus drivers do certain runs. So for them to do a different run there would need to be some sort of an incentive now while there's short bus drivers for that to happen. Okay. Hey, committee man, I put this out there. Is there any other solution that we can bring to the table? Is there any other solution to our problem? It's, it's, it's honestly, it's great forward thinking, you know, by the superintendent uh, in her office, but it should be coming, the money should be coming from him and not us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think exactly. We're, we're in agreement I mean, with that. Even the, even the bidding of the bus, the bus routes, that's on him. He, that's on him. That's his company. It's not, it's not the school committee. It, it's not Greater Lowell's problem. I, I understand. Look, at we could have been Lowell and Haverhill and fought him in court. We didn't. We, we gave him the 78% for this reason. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and like I said, for this reason, we're not in as bad a shape as some of those other districts are with six or seven or eight bus buses not coming to school on time every day, coming late, not being picked up on time, not having buses. As you know, we don't have buses for our after dark program. Those students are getting here with LRTA. We're having problems with buses doing sports runs. We're having a lot of different issues. This was just one way to try to, to, to get some bus drivers available if needed. I guess the next question is if we do allow this to occur, what guarantees do we have that it does solve this particular problem that we will not be shorthanded? There is no guarantee, is no, that there my is understanding? Not. <clears throat> there is not. Go ahead. I apologize for being a few minutes late. I would, I would just wonder if there was any discussion relative to uh, the, the governor's action making National Guard available. So the National Guard is available. Yeah. Just so just to be clear, the National Guard is available for their smaller buses, I not for. Okay. I understand. So we're not having an issue right now with our smaller buses, but we are having some issues with our larger buses. Well, I guess my point would be, could smaller buses be made available and additional National Guard be used for those? Yeah, well, I don't have that us. answer either. LRTA is helping us out right now with, with the after dark issue, but uh, LRT could not help us out with the bus issues. LRT doesn't go into Drake, it doesn't go into other towns, LRTA is for Lowell. So they are helping us out with after, after dark getting those students here. Who pays for that? They're paying, it's, it's a bus pass. All right, that brings up another question. It's a public question. bus pass. They're take, those students are getting on a public bus to get here. Is there a place in the budget for the six thousand dollars? And if so, would it come from like some of the aid they were getting for COVID and and so forth? I can call our business manager up and we can talk about that. I'll take the student representative for a second. Here. All right, that's a good seat for you. <laughs> it's been a long time since I was a student, but um, I we do have a spot in the budget for it, and we could use this from the federal ESSER funds. Could use ESSER one as a um, pay the incentive costs. Is there any other place that we can use that money more advantageously if we were not to approve it? Because there's certain allocations for that type of money. Yep. Yeah, um, so we've, I mean, we've, as we're working through the ESSER funds, we have developed a committee to work on the, the third one. Um, I will say that we've come up with lots of good ideas. Um, I don't know that we've been able to stretch our imagination far enough to use all of the funds yet, so I don't think that this would really take away from anything that we've at least pressingly come up with. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Just to make Anybody have any other questions for the business manager regarding the money? Nope. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. I guess my only question is, could this become a slippery slope and we're offering $1,000 in incentives for six bus drivers? And then all of a sudden, we might need three more bus drivers, and then we do three more bus drivers after that. There was a time that Grand Mall Tech used to run its own, own buses, and it was it, it feasibly, uh, financially, it was well for them. However, as time went on, it became too cumbersome of a job. So we essentially outsourced it, 
and our our, our bus company and signing lucrative contracts um, annually, if not every three years, and they're doing just fine. I don't know why we can't just put this on them and have them satisfy the contract that they sign. And we can. Yeah, we I can. think Jill's just I, trying I'm to bring a solution. I'm not arguing that. I'm just trying to make sure that kids get to school, and, and that's that. But if you if you would like, I'll bring them back to the table, and we can sit down and continue to talk. I think that would be something you know, we, we have to do to hold Mr. McCarthy accountable. Just like the city of Lowell went ahead and held their trash company accountable. That could be your best course of action, mm -hmm. Madam Superintendent, based on the consensus of the board. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't have a problem with that, but I just want to know it is going to impact students. So you you probably will be getting phone calls, yeah, so, and that's fine. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes long-term thinking, too. If we hold them to the penny of the contract, the every I and T dotted mm -hmm. in it, our next contract negotiations may be different with all the bus companies, where if we show a little leniency at the present time and show an effort to work together, although in business it tends to be very cutthroat, would there be an advantage realized if we kind of agreed and the budget can kind of pull it and kind of work together as a team? I know that when business comes in the next contract, their prices are going to be this much higher. They got so much more ad. Um, so I can respect everybody's opinion in this room, but sometimes if we kind of look at it globally in the long range uh, thinking too, we might be advantaged in the, in the future when we have a pressing issue that can go either way if we show some good faith and try to work with our, our, our vendors. Um, with that in mind, um, I'm at the will of the committee here, and uh, do you want to defer or do you want to uh, kind of look at it today? I say we table it. Table it? Yep. Okay. So we don't need a motion at this time. Okay, so I'll, I'll contact John and try to sit down and talk about what we can do to resolve the issues. Yeah, we'll see if we can work together and come up with some, some other solutions or something that we might be able to work into the the future too. I think both sides want to. I think I'm going to add one more thing to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm around the city an awful lot uh, of the day, and uh, yesterday I happened to be uh, on the boulevard, um, down in between Stephenville and Stephenville, and I noticed three bus buses rolled right by me, um, all on the same side of the river, um, all heading to, I guess, to Centerville, um, and they weren't even. 20% full, all three of them. So, I mean, could Mr. McCarthy consolidate the routes in order to satisfy after school, maybe get the kids home a little bit later, take a little take a little bit of burden off some of the drivers that feel like they're overwhelmed? Is there something that he could do to satisfy his contract and think on the boss a little bit himself? So I think, Mr. Bahu, that you know, this is week two of school, so usually after two weeks, three weeks, we'll look at ridership again, and we'll reevaluate our ridership and see if we can consolidate some routes. Yes, that is something that we are, we are prepared to do. And usually we do that after week two or three. So, so if, if it's okay. possible, we will try to, we will try to con consolidate runs. So at this time, I think what we'll do is we'll table it, and we want to thank Jill for bringing a solution and not a problem to us. It's always nice that way, and uh, hopefully we can move that in a direction in the future. So we're on to the next part of our superintendent's report. Okay. So the next item my, on my agenda is the draft school resource officer memorandum of agreement. Uh, the contract involves an MOU which also in, includes standard operating procedures regarding the SRO program in Greater Lowell Technical High School. Uh, I'm prepared to go over the revisions to the initial contract. 
So if you look at page three, page three, uh, under the selection process of the SRO, uh, this was just added regarding any conflicts of interest that might arise during the hiring process, just stating that, that uh, current student or staff members, if there were relationships, that it might constitute a conflict of interest and that be noted, which wasn't noted before in the contract. The next item is on page five. It's the, uh, the level and type of commitment from Tingsboro and Greater Little Technical High School, which wasn't in the former contract, just stating that uh, we will be responsible for the two SRO officers and the department will be responsible for, for uh, supplying us with the SRO officers and training the SRO officers. The next is on page 12. Just describing uh, the area about arresting of students, that students shall only be arrested on school property or at a school-related event at a last resort or when a warrant requires such an arrest. That is new to the agreement. Well, that's common sense. <laughs> and page 13 which is the standing operating procedures, which were in the f former document, which this just outlines, this just outlines in the MOA that there is an attachment and what the attachment uh, involves. And then the last was a record of agreement saying that once this agreement would, would is signed, we would have a copy, the chief would have a copy, there would be a copy uh, downstairs in the main office for our for our assistant principals, and Mr. Barton would have a copy. And the as the uh, SRO work, uh, we pay a percentage, they pay a percentage. No, we pay for both SROs. I know, but we pay for their salary, we pay for their benefits, everything. Mm -hmm. No, we no, just pay for their salary. Okay. Mm -hmm. the yes. Can I have any a questions about? No, uh, we don't have any figures on that. I I can provide you with a figure. So currently, uh, what we have budgeted, currently we have budgeted a hundred and sixty-five thousand for that. That's for two. Yes. Yeah, then I'll make a motion to accept. All right, can okay. I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Barbu? Yes. Mr. Katia? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. O'Hear? Mr. O'Hear? George? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. So we do have uh, two new resource officers, so I would like to bring them to the next school committee to introduce them. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Mr. Kozil is here, but the other position is split between Sergeant Melanson and uh, Sergeant Bonsa. Sounds good. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. I met I, I met the sergeant last week when I came up to pick up my packet. Uh, I thought he was uh, very resourceful. He was happy to uh, help out, he temporarily assigned, but uh, so I'll invite he, did, to he was the going next. out of his way to do his job. Yeah. Okay. On to the report of any uh, business manager. Any report? All right, any old business we want to discuss? Any new business to be discussed? I didn't see any committee men motions. No. Report of any subcommittees? We're on to uh, need a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to so mass. Moved. Second. All right. 
And that is uh, pursuant to Mass General Laws 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, non personnel. Pursuant to Mass General Laws 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy in respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may be detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigating positions of the public body and the chair so declares which it does grievance filed by the greater lowell regional teachers organization on behalf of robert jones in 2019 greater lowell regional vote technical school district and greater lowell regional teachers organization case number mup 218535 Department of Labor Relations, and Robert Jones versus the Greater Lowell Technical High School, MCAD, docket number 19BEM03578. Uh, will any votes need to be taken if we come back from executive session and open session? I, I don't know if we need any votes, do we? Yeah, I think we do. We yeah, do? we do. Okay. We so then we'll come back after um, the meeting. Any votes for ratification contracts discussed will be taken in open session after executive session. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Mr. Bahu? Here I am, yes. Yeah. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Moran? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Here. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Take a time at a recess, Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Second. Uh, roll call. Okay. We're good. Okay. All right. Back in open session. Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gitchia? Yeah. Mr. Bahu? Here. Mr. Tatius? Here. Mr. Warren? Yeah. Mr. O'Hare? Mr. O'Hare? Yes, yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yep. Mr. Gideon? Yes. All right. Any contracts approved in executive session need to be ratified in open session. And I guess, do I have a motion to authorize the employment contract for Title I facilitator of the Greater Lowell Technical High School? Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Gideon? Yes. Mr. Bible? Yes. Mr. Tatsis? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yeah. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. We have a motion to adjourn. Oh, good job on that, Joe. Second. I know. Thank you. Uh, roll call. George seconded. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Mr. Tatsis? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. O'Hare? George? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. So adjourned. Thank you.